The project charter documents relevant project information, such as a description of the customer's needs, the project's purpose, a list of known risks, and a high-level schedule and budget. The project charter enables the project team to plan a project according to stakeholder expectations and to fulfill a project's objectives. For a project charter to serve its function properly throughout a project, it must include specific elements. The first one we'll discuss is the business need. This is one element of the business case. It describes the reason for initiating the project, specifically stating the business problem that the project will resolve. Suppose an internet service provider's call center system cannot cope with high request volumes and is expensive to maintain. Without advanced technology that can integrate all help desk applications, service response times are poor. This could result in the loss of new and existing customers. Aware of this, the company's vice president of operations initiates a project to resolve this business problem. In this example, the Internet service provider's business need is to reduce its operating costs and streamline its operations. The project will resolve the business problem by outsourcing technical support. Advanced multiplex management will help integrate all help desk applications and improve customer service. The next element the project charter should address is the measurable business goals and objectives and factors that are deemed critical to the success of a project. This criterion is used to measure what must be done for the project to be acceptable to the stakeholders. The Internet Service Provider's measurable objectives, when achieved, will demonstrate the desired strategic plan of reducing operational costs by 60%. The business objectives relate to the strategic initiatives outlined in the business case. They represent planned levels of what will be achieved as a result of the project, which can be measured by actual results. The project requirements element of the project charter should state what is needed to perform the work to the required specifications. The Internet Service Provider's project requirements outline what security measures and technology are to be used to link the network. The charter states what characteristics the help desk software is supposed to have, what goals the advanced technology is supposed to meet, how information is to be compiled, and what training offshore agents will receive. A project charter should also contain approval requirements. It should describe the quality objectives for each deliverable in terms of output standards and approval requirements. This includes all the product-related reviews and processes for acceptance testing that will be carried out during the project. In this example, the Internet Service Provider's project approval requirements set out the processes for testing, acceptance, rejection, and resubmission deliverables. These are tangible objects produced as a result of project execution. Another element the project charter should address is the product scope description. It describes the product to be delivered by the project. This helps you to translate the project objectives into tangible deliverables. In the example, the Internet Service Provider's product scope provides a basic description of the technology and training requirements required to reduce operating costs and streamline operations. The imposed limits control the delivery of the product. The milestones and deliverables are also elements of the project charter. The deliverables are a set of outputs for each milestone delivery date. This information provides checkpoints to monitor project progress and revalidate work. The summary budget element of the project charter is an itemized forecast of estimated or intended expenditures assigned to a particular project activity over a set period. Your summary budget specifies an allocated disbursement amount for each phase of the project. The project charter should explicitly name the project manager and provide a delineation of responsibilities. This element establishes the authority of the named individual to make decisions and lead the project. The project sponsor approval element names the person who has ultimate responsibility for and has the formal authority to approve the project charter. Approval indicates an understanding of the purpose and content described, an agreement that work should be initiated, and that necessary resources should be committed to the project. 
Project Charter Approval formally initiates the project. As the first sanctioned document, it is distributed to key stakeholders. These may include the customer, the management team, and others who might be involved with the project. This marks the beginning of the planning phase of the project. Once approved by the project sponsor, the charter authorizes the project manager to assign resources to the project. It serves as the green light for all subsequent planning processes to begin, including the creation of the project management plan. Think of the project management plan as the user manual for your project. The project management plan answers the questions of how you will go about performing project work. Each element of the project will have its own subsidiary management plan. The subsidiary plans include scope, schedule, budget, quality, human resources, communication, risk, procurement, and stakeholder. The project manager must ensure that all of the subsidiary plans are cohesive and support the overall project vision.